Hello everyone, this is Lucas with N2V Solutions. Uh, glad you could join us again. Today we're going to look at how do I update the firmware on my phone using zero config in the phone system without having to log into the phone directly. Um, let's go through it. I'm going to uh, show you a couple ways you can do this. Um, one is by logging into the phone, but in the end we want you to be able to upgrade your firmware using the phone system. Um, and not the phone directly. So, get rid of me here. This is my test system. My extension is 203. I'm currently on firmware 10846. The screen we're on is on the Grandstream PBX. I've clicked on PBX and then the left on zero config. This is where we push information. This is where we send a provisioning file to a phone um, based on the, the preset conditions we've we put in place. Um, in this case, there are a few ways to do it. The last config file that my phone received was on May 4th. To, currently it's May 10th. So I have not done anything with this since I uh, upgraded it last. And that was when I upgraded to 10846. Um, to start, we're going to go to firmware.grandstream.com, which is this tab here. And if you just type in firmware.grandstream.com, it will redirect you to this address here. Um, I scrolled down to GXP2170, that's the phone I have, and clicked on 10847 here, which it already downloaded. So I've already done that part and have the file unzipped in my downloads folder on my computer. So that's already been done. I downloaded the file, unzipped it, it's ready to go. Uh, back on the phone system, in zero config there are uh, a few different ways to push the firmware update information to a phone. Uh, let's take a look at, at what's on there right now. I'm going to show you a couple of things. So um, if you log into your phone, let me start this page over. If you log into your phone, it'll ask for your username and password. If you didn't change it, it's admin admin. Um, because this is my test phone, I don't need a password I haven't changed it. Under the maintenance tab, upgrade and provisioning, this is where you look at firmware upgrade information. So with uh, the 108 firmwares and beyond, the phone now has an ability to upload a firmware directly into it. You don't need to push it from a, another server or another place. Um, but if you don't want to do that, so if we could click on this, navigate to the file I just downloaded, and it would upgrade this phone. If you don't want to do that, and you want to push the file from the phone system, the settings we need to look at are this first one here, firmware upgraded and provisioning, always check for new firmware. So this, every time I reboot the phone, it's going to check my firmware address to see if there's new firmware there. Um, that's set to that by default, so if you haven't changed it, you should be all set and ready to go. The config path is the path in which it's told this is where you go to get your new config file. If your config file then tells the phone system where the firmware address is, this next part will change as well. Firmware, it's told right now to use HTTPS and to check this address because I've already pushed this address. Um, if you make note of this, it's the IP address of the phone system, colon 8089 slash zero config slash firmware. You can put these settings in by hand without pushing a, f uh, a config file to do it. Um, and then it would work um, if you have the phone system set up. In this case, I'm going to flip it to HTTP, delete the address just to show you that it changes it. So now that's, that's saved and I no longer have a firmware path on this phone. Back on the phone system, zero config. The three places you can put in a uh, firmware address is global policy, global templates, and model templates. What's the difference? Global policy are settings that get pushed to every Grandstream phone that you configure with zero config regardless of, of what they are. If it's a 2170, a 2130, a 2135, a 2140, all phones that are Grandstream have these basic settings and they're all listed throughout these sections. 
And any of these settings can be sent to a phone by default every time it grabs a new extension. And that's where I've set up mine, because I want all my phones to update from the phone system. So under the maintenance tab, I check the box by firmware source. And for source, I told it to use the local UCM server. You can use a URL, you can use USB media. If you go URL, it's going to ask for HTTP settings, stuff like that. In this case, we're going to keep it the local UCM server. Under the directory, it defaults to root directory. It's the only one available. And over here is the manage storage button. So if we click on manage storage, it takes us to the place where firmware files can be uploaded to. Now, the one thing I don't like about this is there's no label for this. I don't know what firmware version this is. I just know it's for the GXP2170, and that's it. I know that I uploaded it on April 20th, and beyond that, it could be any version. Um, in this case, I'm going to hit my folder and navigate to my downloads where I have downloaded the new firmware. We're going to grab my new file and upload it. This will upload over the top of the current one in this area. You don't need to delete the older one to put the new one in. Once you've put the new one in, it will uh, be the only one there. The, the previous one will be gone. So on the bottom left corner, it shows our percentage. And there it should be almost done. It should be almost done. There we go. Um, now that's been uploaded successfully. It looks identical. The only difference is I got a different date because I uploaded it today. Still the same size file. It would be nice to have a label on those, but for now we don't have one. Once that's uploaded, I don't have any save button. I just close that out. And if I ever need to add a new file, I have to come in here and hit manage storage and upload a new file. There's no special place yet to navigate to to have access to that. I believe they are working on adding a, a section for that, but it isn't here yet. We scroll back down to the bottom. If you've set this for the first time, you got to make sure you save it. Once you save it, you apply it. Then every phone set with the with the uh, zero config will grab these, this setting. Um, you can change any other settings you like. If you go into one of these other options, global templates, you can create a template that you can apply to any phone. It has the same types of settings as global policy, except you get to pick which phone gets it and which one doesn't. Model templates will have this setting as well. The difference is you uh, create a model template per each model. In doing so, you get uh, many other options that are specific to this model, not just the generic ones that are for everybody. And you can do that with every model phone. In this case, you can see here I made one for a 2135 that uh, would use the root directory as well, um, just for the sake of making it to show it. All right. Once you have selected the way that you want to, to push the config file, you go back into zero config, and you can see all of my dates have, have changed. That's because I went in and changed global policy. So none of these phones have now received the new config information for that policy. So I'm going to go to my phone, my test phone that I'm working with, 203, and I'm going to push a new config to it. So I click the update button over here. This is the phone that I deleted out the firmware address information. Once I push that config, you can hit the refresh button to see if it got the new config. You can see right away, it grabbed the config. So we're going to go back to that phone and see what it looks like. So I'm going to start fresh. And, and the phone is rebooting, so we can't log into it. So not only did it grab the config, it probably already detected that I had the new firmware there. So we're going to give that a minute to uh, finish rebooting, and we'll be right back. All right, so the uh, phone finished rebooting. The change of the firmware address was apparently enough to make it want a reboot. So we are going to log back in.
just to take a quick look. And maintenance, upgrading, provisioning. Scroll down, we can see the firmware upgrade and everything is back to what it should be. Grab that from that global policy when I push the config file. Again, the IP address colon 8089 slash zero config slash firmware. You can put this in any any phone regardless um, if it's getting provisioned with zero config or not. And it will uh, use that path. So for example, when would you do that? If you were on a firmware that was having provisioning problems, then you might come and punch this in manual, manually, even though you created the provisioning stuff for it, you'd punch it in manually so that it would grab the new firmware and upgrade the new firmware so that you could fix your provisioning problem, stuff like that. Once, uh, once this is set, the phone left sit for a while, would grab the new firmware and reboot itself again, or you can come up and reboot the phone from here and it will force a, uh, another check to make sure that, that it's going. Um, the phone actually already just started rebooting again, so we're going to give it a little more time. It should now be grabbing the firmware, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, the uh, update has completed, and the phone has rebooted. We're going to log back in, just take a look. And you'll notice right off the bat, the version still says 108.46. Interesting. So if you go to status, account status, oh, system info, there we go, you will see that it actually says 108.47. So the, the cache, the, the browser cache likes to not let go of that. So if, uh, if you need that to update, um, you would have to go in and clear your browser cache. We can even go since the beginning of time. I've needed to clear this for a while, so this will be fine. Once that's cleared, you can refresh your browser again. Log back in. And you'll see it says 108.47. So that's just a browser cache issue, depending on which browser you're using. But the uh, the version should always show up correctly in system info regardless of how, what it shows up up here. So again we can take a quick peek at maintenance provisioning see that that's all changed. Firmware has been upgraded. We can go back now to the phone system maybe Well, it's because I cleared my browser and cache. <laughs> browser cache. There we go. BBX. Zero config. First time you click on zero config, it can take a couple minutes to load. And you'll see that the version here changes as well. So that's it. That is how you upgrade your firmware using zero config um, in the UCM. However, you've also seen that you can upgrade it with the uh, with the phone as well just by going straight into the phone and uh, there is a firmware upgrade button. Once again, thank you all for joining me. If you have any questions or comments or require other videos, don't hesitate to send me a message. You can uh, reach me at n2bs.com. Send us a, an email, give us a call, and we'd be happy to help you out. Thanks. Have a great day.